Good evening everyone. Today we are in the second week of our summer workshop on plasma physics and I am Swarnil. The topic today in our 11th lecture is shock waves and the KDV Barger's equation. Now what are shock waves? From a basic un understanding of mechanics you can come to the shock waves in plasma. Shock waves in plasma differ from those in a normal gas in a number of ways, different aspects. These differences arise from the ability of the plasma to conduct electricity and to interact with the magnetic fields from the separate behavior within the plasma of the particles with the same charge but different masses. Certain types of shock waves which have no analog in classical gas dynamics can also exist in plasma. So this is what Payne told in 2006, A.J. Payne from the Imperial College London. Now a geomagnetic storm showed up some years back that is a couple of years back in 2018 April. And there were a lot of auroral sightings. So this kind of auroral phenomena were observed. And this I think is somewhere in Tasmania. And for the details of this shock waves, astronomical shock, you can just refer to this website space.com well so these were the different auroral incidents that occurred during that 19th april 2018 now you see in solar flares in the environment of the sun there appears this kind of shock waves they emit shock waves that reach the earth. So solar flares and coronal mass ejections sent out shock waves that reverberate through our solar system. But shock waves through plasma, the ionized and high energy particles makes up the solar wind. So you know that solar wind is composed of plasma. So it does not behave like a typical terrestrial ones. Instead of traveling through collisions, between particles, these astrophysical shocks are driven by interaction between the moving charged particles and the magnetic field of the sun and the planets nearby. A driving blast of plasma accelerated into the ambient plasma creates an electromagnetic force that accelerates the ambient ions to supersonic speed, much higher speed, pushing the shock wave onward even without particles directly colliding with it. Thus far, piercing together the physics of these interactions has been a challenge because spacecraft are limited in what they are, they can measure. They cannot measure every data, but certain research groups uh, on earth, they have created and observed some of these processes in the lab. Now you see this is one of the supersonic nitrogen plasma flows when a wedge in a radio frequency discharge plasma. So you can see that there are some wedge shaped body out here and the uh, nitrogen plasma glides over it provided you see there are shock fronts. Now I'll what I talk about these terms, it will be clear in the later terms. Now, shock waves in plasma, we study it by the application of the KDV Barger's equation, Kortevek DV Barger's equation. So, the expression of the KDV Barger's equation is something like this del phi del tau, where phi is the potential, A phi del phi del xi. This is the nonlinear term. You see, these are the two quantities, nonlinear terms. B del Q, del phi 3 del, uh, it should be something like del 3 phi, sorry, and del xi q. So it is the dispersive term and this is the viscosity term. 
Now, let's start with the governing equations. So, these are the governing equations. These are, well, we have, for this case, we have taken up a plasma consisting of hot and cold electrons. And the wave mode generated is the electron acoustic mode. Now, here you see, we have the hot electrons and the cold electrons. They are continuity equations are these two, 1 and 2. This is the momentum equation of the hot electrons and this is the momentum equation of the cold electrons. Now, let us see the different terms of these equations. These two are very clear. There are no source term on the right hand side. So, this is the convective derivative. It is the potential due to electrostatic potential. This is the pressure term due to hot electrons. This is the quantum bomb term. Here also we have the same kind of thing, but here the proportion of hot and cold electrons is included and you see here also we have a pressure term corresponding to the cold electrons and the bomb term corresponding to the cold electrons. Now this is the viscosity term. We know that viscosity coefficient in our uh, high school physics is denoted by eta. So, in plasma physics, while doing the hydrodynamic equation, this term is the viscosity coefficient. Now, this is the Poinsot's equation. Uh, we have hot, cold electron density, hot electron density and ion density. Now, as we have done in KDV, we also use a stretching of variables because we want to study the variations in a very microscopic scale. So, this is the coordinate being stretched like this, the time and the viscosity coefficient that is also undergoing a change, epsilon to the power half eta 0, it is a constant. So, while using those uh, new stretch variables, the derivatives with respect to time and space, they change like this. Substituting all those things in the governing equations and eliminating our usual process in KDV, by eliminating, we come to the first order terms like this and with the Poinsot's equation, we get this term. The perturbation expansion, you see, we have taken the uh, normalized with the equilibrium densities. So, NH and NC becomes equilibrium values are 1 unity. The We have taken a streaming motion. So, we have taken both the hot and cold electrons to be U0. And for instance, we have taken phi 0 as the unperturbed potential. Well, let me and the first order terms and the second order terms. Now we have used the same reductive perturbation technique that we have learnt in KDV. Here we have those uh, continuity and momentum equations for the power of epsilon that is epsilon to the power 3 by 2. From there, we just uh, remove our or eliminate our terms and get the velocity and density in terms of phi 1. You see, it is you see is some terms of n 1 and if we put it here, it comes in terms of phi 1. So, going to the higher order again, we get this 5 equation, 4 equations, 2 for each momentum and continuity for the hot and cold electrons and similarly, we go for a Poinsot's equation. But since you see it is the second derivative of xi, it is epsilon square is the lowest order and epsilon cube is the next higher order. So, after some elimination, we get the KDV equation like this. Here, this 3 should be here is the KDV Burgess equation. Now, as we have used the KDV equation earlier, the constants come in terms of A, B, C. I have just written for that problem. For this uh, problem that we have uh, considered, so A, B, C are represented by this M, U, F, C, F, H. These are the factors. Now, the solution of the KDV Burgess equation. You see, the in order to find the solution, there are a number of ways, analytical, numerical solution. So, one of the analytical solution is that we use the transformation of the stretched space coordinate and stretched time coordinate into one single coordinate xi and as xi tends to 0, as xi tends to 0, uh, tends to infinity, psi tends to 0, 
and the first order derivatives of the potential they also tend to zero so we have got a solution of tan hyperbolic so this kind of solution was given by was was we uh, article we'll just um, put it in the class so this kind of solution is given is a tan hyperbolic solution so you see the shock profile initially the potential was low then suddenly increases so there's a abrupt jump the potential if it is suppose it's a negative potential and it's a positive potential so if there is an abrupt jump like this so there is a shock front in between so here for this alpha is equal to 0 1 0 7 for one of the our papers we see that it is going from a negative profile to a positive profile whereas for the other values of alpha it goes from a positive to a negative profile so as you can see when this kind of shock profiles grow over time it gradually evolves it gradually evolves into a uh, solitary kind of structure when these two forces balance these two side would be at same level so it will give you a solitary structure now with reference to this photograph we can just say that you see here there was no shock profile as it goes higher so higher value of the lambda for one of our one of our articles and here you see the shock profile negative to positive and it's slowly due to this parameter lambda it's slowly receding here also as one moves from this uh, directional cosine it's increasing the shock front is more and more separated now as i've said that is gradually evolves into a kdv kind of equation so you see the if we have plotted with an initial this is done by uh, one of our collaborators chinmay das and he have carried out for one of our papers and you see it's a is the psi that is the wave function so it gradually changes and for a certain value of k that is wave number there is no perturbations and gradually for higher k there is a almost constant kind of profile okay now here also the show, uh, how the shock profiles develop into a solitary profiles here these are the parameters xi tau and these are the different parametric variations of one of our articles so a few of our articles is carried by Jyotima Goswami and published in astrophysics and space science in Springer and in Cambridge laser physics laser and particle beam so thank you for your patience in the next lecture we will try to solve the KDV purchase equation